Pure Outreach Ministries Reach Bible Study. Today, we're going to have Evangelist Maria uh, is going to bring us the word out of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And <clears throat> oh, the Lord's going to use my sister right here. Uh, she's always obedient to, to the Spirit, and the Spirit uses her. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm excited because uh, at least here on The Chosen Few will be her first Bible study, but not her first. Amen. Uh, <laughs> and, not, and definitely not the Holy Spirit's first, you know. Amen. Um, but we're excited uh, because uh, it just shows that each and every single one of us here who is in this training is going to keep growing and growing. Amen. And, and, and just, you know, doing more stuff for the kingdom. Amen. Uh, I, I would like to mention uh, yesterday, as you all seen in the pictures, we were out evangelizing out in Huntington Beach. What a powerful, powerful, awesome day we had over there. Amen, amen. Uh, in fact, there was many of God's uh, soldiers out there uh, that day. So God had a plan. Amen. Right? God, Because he brought a lot of his uh, children out there to go preach the word. So uh, that's amazing. It was an amazing day. A lot of people got blessed. A lot of people got prayed over. And so uh, we just uh, can't wait to do it again because uh, it's exciting. Amen. Uh, with that, uh, I have the privilege to uh, open us up in prayer Amen. this week. So Amen. with that, I'll ask everyone to bow your heads and uh, let's go into prayer. Amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for this day, Father God. I thank you for everything that you're doing through this ministry, Father God. I thank you for the training that your Holy Spirit is giving each and every single one of your, 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 your warriors here, Father God. Yes, Father God. Lord, we thank you and, and we just, we ask, Lord, that you just... We want more of you, Lord. Yes, Lord. We want more of you. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Train our hands, Father God, for that for that war and our fingers for battle, Father God. We are willing servants, Father God, and, and we just look to you, Lord. And, Lord, I just want to ask that you anoint um, Evangelist Maria today, Father God, that you use her, Father God, to, 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 to uh, teach your word, Father God, that those uh, people that are out there listening, whether it's today or tomorrow, Father God, that they may be blessed by this message that, that you're going to use uh, Evangelist Maria uh, to teach us today, Father God. So we love you, Lord. We praise you. And we give you all the glory, Father God, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Praise God. I just want to thank God today. He's so awesome. I just want to thank him for this opportunity again Amen. to be before God. I want to thank everybody that is here and for those who are on their way, uh, who have maybe found traffic. I don't know how, but you maybe found traffic somehow. <laughs> Amen. But we drive safely getting here. Praise his holy name. I want to thank each and every one of you that are tuned in on Facebook Live and those that are going to be tuned in later on on YouTube once we upload the video there. I just want to thank everybody. And then again, I just want to say we had a, like Evangelist said, we had a wonderful time yesterday out at Huntington Beach. I mean, the Holy Spirit was present, heavy using us all the ones that were speaking all the ones that was praying god was using each and every one of us to his fullest capability he most definitely did show up praise god but i'm just telling you i just want to take too much more time because I'm, I'm so enthusiastic and, and, and i'm anticipating um the use of the move of god in our wonderful woman of god here Amen. evangelist maria i mean you know that you know her as a individual that can preach that word we, you know her at that yeah. but god has said he's moving her into a new era of her calling She's moving into the teaching realm. I mean, God is going to be opening up so many doors for her to move into areas where she'll be teaching, literally teaching the word of God to individuals. So this is her first opportunity here on our Reach Ministry Bible study. But she's not, this is not her first time, praise God. Right. So without further ado, I want to bring this mighty woman of God up so God can use her mightily to yes, teach us amen. on 1 Corinthians chapter amen. 6. Come on up, woman praise of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Thank praise you. God. Thank you, Pastor. Yes. I appreciate that. Although it's funny because the Lord is using a chapter that exhorts for me to teach it. So I don't know much about teaching, but and how much I'm going to do about teaching. But usually when I teach, I preach. And then when I preach, I teach a little bit. So this chapter is not long, but it's super, super packed with advice with exhortation, with teaching, 
correction, yes. and all of that. So I just want to go and enter into prayer, if you don't mind. I know we prayed, but I just want to ask the Holy Spirit. Let's bow. Father God, I ask that today you use me, Lord, as you would use anybody else that would be a willing vessel, Lord God. Yes, Jesus. I ask that you use me in a mighty way to deliver your word in an honorable way, Lord God, that would reach those that need it, Lord God. Yes, Lord that you get me out of the way, yes, that my experiences and my, and, and my opinions and my feelings and my emotions get out of the way, yes, and that I just speak your word, Lord God, so that those that need it can receive it straight into their hearts and their spirits, Lord yes, God. Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Yes. Amen. 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 So with that, I am teaching on 1 Corinthians 6. Amen. <laughs> oh, God. And it starts by saying, avoiding lawsuits with Christians. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? I did not know when I came to the Lord that you are not supposed to go into lawsuits with your fellow Christians. Mm. But I assumed that you can't sue anybody, that once you become saved, you're that person that doesn't even get into any of that. Well, I learned because I heard one of our elders at the time when they put out the Christian business uh, directory oh. <laughs> on the counter and he said, well, thank you very much for letting me know who I won't be doing business with because if I do business with them, I can't sue them if they do me wrong. So uh, thank you for the direction. And I said, that is a weird comment. How does that work? I thought you just don't sue anybody. But, you know, the, the Lord does tell us to follow the law. And if somebody wrongs us, we can't sue somebody Amen. if they wrong us, right? That's right. The Lord works towards, you know, making it right for you. But not your fellow Christians. And let me start by reading chap uh, verse 1 of chapter 6. When one of you has a dispute with another believer, how dare you file a lawsuit and ask a secular court to decide matter instead of taking it to other believers? Amen. And we do know that the courts, they, they, they operate in the secular. Yes. They, don't, they, yeah. don't, they don't look towards the Bible to resolve your issues. And they are not just, even though it's the law, Sometimes the law is not justice. That's right. Amen. 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 So don't you realize that someday we believers will judge the world? The Lord uses us to judge the world. Amen. Yes. Amen. Not to judge them as how they live, but to observe and see where they're doing wrong. And for me, so I can pray for them. Right. Amen. As since you are going to judge the world, it says. Don't you realize that we will judge angels? Mm. Even angels. I didn't realize I had to go study. And I'm not going to go deep into that. But we are called to even judge the angels. Amen. The Lord Amen. judged an angel, remember? Thank when you, he man. became disobedient, the master of worship, mm -hmm. he had yep. to cast him down. And he's now our enemy. Amen. Right? Because he wanted to be God. So you should surely be able to resolve ordinary disputes in this life. Amen. Right? So I just want to say that I learned a lot in just these three uh, verses here. Because I realized that we can judge the world. I always hear Christianese uh, uh, sentences such as, we shouldn't judge. Mm. And, and it usually comes from the secular people talking to the Christian amen, people amen. that Come we on. shouldn't judge them. Come on. And I, I, I received that and I accepted that because I said, yes, we shouldn't. I have family members that are not safe. And I thought I shouldn't judge them. Well, no, you shouldn't judge them and criticize them and condemn them. You shouldn't. You shouldn't, but you should in direction because you have the revelation of the Holy Spirit yes. and you have that connection with God yes. and you have 
your eyes are not covered anymore. You don't have scales in your That's eyes right. anymore. Amen. And you can come in love and talk and have a conversation with that family member that is doing wrong. And you could tell them in love that God loves them and they can do better. And they can have a better life. And that you can tell them how their life is full of purpose. Because sometimes they don't realize it. And in that, you're judging them, but not because you're wanting to condemn them, but you're wanting to make them better. You're wanting to open up their eyes so that they can realize that they don't have to live that way, that they don't have to be doing wrong things. But that is judging too. But it's the right way of judging. Amen. Not talking behind their back, not saying what they're doing wrong to other family members, not gossiping about them, but yes, telling them directly, yes, amen. especially amen. if you have a relationship with amen. them. And I just, I, I just want to tell you and encourage you right now that if you have family members that you're not in touch with, I, I, I urge you to create relationships with them so that they can be open to hearing you about what you have to say about God because we can't come and, and, and Bible thump them in the head and say, you can't do this, you can't do that. Well, yeah, that's judging. And Amen. they won't receive it. Amen. So I ask that you be wise and you create those relationships so you're able to sit down and have a conversation with them and judge them in the way that we were supposed to judge, Amen. biblically. Amen? Amen. 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 Verse uh, 4. If you have legal disputes about such matter, why go outside judges who are not respected by the church? I am saying this to shame you. Is it there anyone in all the church who is wise enough to decide these issues? But instead, one believer sues another right in front of unbelievers. So the Bible says that when we have issues or illnesses or trouble, we go to the elders. The elders of the church are the ones that are wise that are set in place, that are placed in that position so that they can guide us and love us and pray for us and direct us and give us counsel. So we, the Bible says that we go to them. So why not go to them when we have legal issues? Amen. Why not go to them so that they can biblically, in a sound mind, direct us and give us instruction on how to deal with these legal issues? Amen. They're wiser about the Lord. They're wiser about the Word. They're wiser about how they've dealt with other situations. Maybe they've done it the wrong way and now they know how to do it the right way. And so they can instruct us. Why go to a courtroom, to a judge, to attorneys? It's all about money for them or laying down the law even when it's not justice. Instead of going to the elders, instead of Amen. going to a wise person. And if you don't have elders in your church that you think you can go to, go to, my mom was a great, I mean, I, now that I know the word a lot more, I know she was a prophetess, judge, prayer warrior, scholar in the eyes of the Lord. She had such wise counsel for anybody that would call her. She had nonstop calls every week. And she was one of the deaconess of the church because she had that wise counsel. She, she instructed her own pastor. Amen. And so if you don't have elders at the church, find somebody like that, Amen. that is strong in the Lord, that you know have your, their best in, interests for your life, and that will take you to the Word of God so that you can get wise direction directly from the throne room of heaven. Amen. Because these people go to the Lord before they counsel you. Right. They don't just say it out of, out of their emotions. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to be... Mentioning emotions a lot because I've been uh, learning about, we've been learning about emotions <laughs> and not being in your emotions in class, right? We're in um, school of ministry. Amen. Verse 7, even to have such losses with one another is a defeat for you. Mm. Why not just accept the injustice and leave it at that? Why not let yourself be cheated? Instead, you yourselves are the ones who do wrong and cheat even your fellow believers. So, I'm going to go 
to verse 6, but instead, one believer sues another right in front of unbelievers. I really mm. want to touch about that. Amen. Because, see, your actions, as soon as you say you're following the Lord and you love Jesus Christ and you're, you're, they think that you are proclaiming that you're perfect, the people that are not walking your walk. And so... They, they judge and they criticize and they, and they see every step you take. And if you are suing your own brothers and sisters, your own brethren, in your own church or in your own walk with Christ, don't you think that that could be one of the things that is, could use, that the enemy could use as a stumbling block for the unbelievers? Mm, don't amen. you think that we could be uh, giving false witness? Yeah. That we could be... Uh, causing somebody to not ever want to show up at church because they're going to say, well, if they're fighting amongst each other and they're suing each other and they're, and they're, and, and they're seeking their best interest instead of being humble, why should I follow their Christ? If that's their Christ, why would I want him? Amen. We don't stop and think about that kind of stuff when we're going through our own situations. So therefore... Don't be a false witness. Don't be a stumbling block. Amen. Don't sue your brethren. It says here following, the verses following that. Why not let yourself be cheated? Ooh. Mm. <laughs> who wants to be cheated? Okay. <laughs> and who would humbly sit back and allow that to happen to them? Much more if they're doing your kids wrong. Let's say somebody did something wrong against your children at school. Don't you want to go and fight them? I know my mom went and fought, fought them. When I started getting into a lot of fights in school, in middle school, not in high school, I used to go to the alley every Friday. I used to braid up my hair and beat up on some girls every Friday because they looked uh, wrong at me. They bumped my shoulder in the hallway. And they wanted to kick me out with a rightful, you know, reason. I was trouble. Although I wasn't fighting inside the school, but I was causing trouble with my classmates. And I was fighting them for just, I had anger issues. I didn't even know what anger was. Mm. But I had anger issues. And I was taking it out on them. And, and they, couldn't, they couldn't stare at me. They couldn't check me out. They couldn't bump into my shoulders. Because I would tell them I will see you on Friday after school in the alley. Mm. <laughs> and I would beat them down. And I, I thought I was, you know, defending myself, right? My mom taught me to defend myself, right? Right? And I wasn't happy with that. I wasn't just happy with doing that. My brother came to me and he said, oh, some girls are bothering me in class. They're bullying me and I don't want to get in trouble by going against a girl. Can you take care of it? And I said, show them to me in the hallway. So I waited for him in class, and when he came out, he pointed them out. And I started, you know, confronting them. And my brother was behind me on my left side, and my sister Rosa was behind me on my right side. And so the girl started, like, you know, being intimidated, I could tell, because I had a reputation. I would beat down every girl that would mess with me. So this girl said, well, no, I won't meet you in the alley after school. I want her. And then I'm like, which one of my friends is she pointing at? And so I said, excuse me. And she said, yeah, that's right, her. That skinny little stick, Rosa, was like right here. <laughs> and I said, oh, you want to find my sister? Okay, I'll see you in the alley on Friday. And, and so after school. And so I went and turned around and looked at my sister and I said, I'm going to braid your hair. And this is what you're going to do. And I gave her instructions on how to beat her up. I told her the tactics to use on how to beat her up. You see what I was doing in school? I was creating ruckus. I was, I was a mess. I wasn't even concentrating on my studies. And my sister was a straight-A student. And now I'm getting her to get into fights. And, and so my mom had to really go. By the way, my sister beat her up. <laughs> <laughs> and from then on my sister became a fighter she make, became even a greater fighter than I ever was because I got married early I got married when I was a teenager and she just then went on with herself and my mom went into school when they 
first they suspended me and then they wanted to change me to another school. And she came in there and she said, she is your problem during school. You can't control her, then it's your fault. You can't get rid of her that easy. You have to deal with her. You have to correct her. What are you doing with the other girl that fought her? And my mom didn't allow them. She said, because of you not wanting to deal with her, you're, you're passing her on to another school? Well, over there, she's going to do the same thing, and much more so because I can't keep an eye on her as much as when she's close to me, so you will not kick her out of school, and I will take you to court if you do because that's going to make me get out of my way, and I have four other kids that I need to take to school. But was, weren't they right in trying to get me out of there because I was too much trouble? Amen. But my mom came and tried to do justice. She didn't want to get cheated. She didn't want to waste more time. She didn't want to inconvenience herself. And she was a fighter too. That's where I learned it from. I saw her fighting the neighbors. So that's who, you know. <laughs> and so it was really her fault. So I don't know. She was defending me though. But she felt like she was going to be cheated. But in that time, she wasn't following the Lord. She, has, she hadn't reconciled with the Lord. Amen. But it's easy to go try to defend your own. And it's easy to try to say that you don't want to get cheated. And we are blessed and highly favored. And we walk in the anointing. And we walk in favor. And when I go to the store, I'm going to get the first spot parking lot. And yes, all that is true. But we need to be wise and sensitive to the Holy Spirit when we need to sit back and take the hit. Because we might be ministering with our actions to those who have not yet found the truth, to those who have not yet experienced the Lord in their lives. And they, if our neighbors are the only ones that our church, to, you know, we can show Christ to them and they don't want to go to church, then we need to sit back and we need to realize whose life are we impacting. I used to get into fights with neighbors because they would block me. I don't now. If a, if, if, a, if a visitor comes to my house, I run outside and make sure that they're not blocking my neighbors. I am a good neighbor. If I can be a good neighbor, you know, I do whatever I can for my neighbors. And... And, and I, that, I wasn't that way before. But they don't go to church. And I don't have time to give everybody a Bible study or come and read the Bible with them. But if I can smile at them, say, God bless you, and be a good example, and be a good neighbor, and even watch out for them. There was one day in the middle of the night, the neighbor's door was open, and, and it was like 3 a.m., and I, know, I don't know whether, why the, his car door was widely open. And I had to wake up my son so that they can help me go alert him because I don't know if there was a guy in the car, somebody had just robbed his car, maybe he was in the car and they had just robbed him. And, and, and I go out of my way because I know that I need to make sure that they, that they some, see something different in me. I don't concentrate on being cheated. I don't concentrate on, on, on people doing me wrong anymore because because we waste time, energy, focus, and we even waste that connection with the Holy Spirit when we start concentrating on yeah. those things, amen? amen? It's hard. I'm not saying it's easy. It's hard. But we need to make the extra effort to be different. We were called to impact the world. We were yes. called to change the world. We yes. were called to, to bring souls to Christ. Yes. How are we going to bring them if we're not different, Amen. if we're the same as the world, we are not of this world. We're just passing through. Amen. Everything that is physical possessions or anything in this world, it's not worth it. Amen. The only thing that is worth is your salvation. Amen. Fight for that. Yes. Fight for being an influencer. Amen. 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 First nine, don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't fool yourselves. Those who indulge in sexual sin or who worship idols or commit adultery or are male prostitutes or practice homosexuality or are thieves or greedy people or drunkards or are abusive or cheat people 
None of these will inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. Some of you were once like that, but you were cleansed. You were made holy. You were made right with God by calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Amen. 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 How many of these, like Pastor Dan this morning when he was preaching and he was saying, I might as well raise up my hand for all of these sins, all of these past, past issues that, you know, I'm reading right here. How many of us were raised in ha their hands for several of these? Amen. 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 You know, uh, when I came to the Lord, uh, I was fighting against idolatry with my um, ex-husband. I didn't know that he was doing that, but I asked the Lord for direction, and, and he showed me that there was idolatry in his heart, and I didn't know. But my mom had said that I idolized my husband before I came to the Lord, and I started separating myself from my family because of that, because I didn't accept it. I said, I know, I know who God is, and because I'm not following him doesn't mean that now I'm idolizing a human being. I'm not. But I was because I loved him Amen. and I worshipped him and I followed him and he was on an assignment to take me to a bad uh, cult and it and it, it and everything came to light when I turned to to Christ because when we were married we were fine and he was happy until I turned to Christ and then he started showing his true colors and he started trying to take me to where he was worshiping his God and I wouldn't. And I know it's because of my mom's prayers that I didn't fall into that. My mom Amen. prayed for me for 25 years. And I know that she was praying hard and my sister Rosa were praying hard. And I know my dad too. But I know that the ones that were crying, fervently praying on their knees for me were my mom and my sister Rosa because yes. they knew. Because they were alert. I was blinded. I had scales in my eyes. And there was idolatry in my house. Him towards his God and all his statues and books and all that meditation he was doing, and me by following him. But the day I said, I release him to you, Lord, I Amen. gained freedom. Amen. And Amen. he Amen. left because darkness couldn't stay in that Amen. house. Amen. And the Lord was the Lord of that house. Amen. And he became the, the one that, that ruled in that house. Amen? Amen. Amen? And I had to give that up. It wasn't easy. I loved my husband. But I had to do it because he was on an assignment. He wasn't going to turn his heart to God. He had already showed that. And so idolatry had to leave my house. And before he left, I had to anoint the house, pray for the house, inside and out, in every room, every bed, because I was fighting spiritual warfare every night. The demons were flying over our bed because it was that heavy. And God had to show me. I was suppressed and I didn't know it. If you see my pictures nowadays from back in the day, I looked like I was when they have those... Uh, what do they call them when they do uh, sessions with you and they... Hypnotized? Yeah, I look hypnotized. My eyes look hypnotized. My eyes look different. They, don't, they didn't look like the light that they, that they show now. And a lot of people always tell me that yesterday, this man just told me that my eyes were full of light. I know it's Christ. Amen. And I know it's yes, because amen. I died. I try my hardest to die to myself every day. Hallelujah. Because amen. I don't want to die. I idolize anything in this world Hallelujah. ever. Ever, Amen. ever. Today I changed my outfit three times. I don't want to idolize outfits. I just wanted to be comfortable because I knew it was going to be hot in here. <laughs> Pastor Henry's <laughs> preaching sauna in here. Like, but he took care of me. There's a fan yeah, flowing and I feel it. Thank God. <laughs> you know, but sometimes we worship our wardrobe. Yeah. We worship our husbands. Amen. We worship our children, let's be careful not to worship them. My mom didn't worship us. She said, I know you're not mine. I know the Lord has uh, assigned you to me. And it's an honor. And I will pray for you all the time. But I tell the Lord, do with them as you will, Lord. Whatever it takes, but bring them. I don't care if they have no legs, but bring them to your feet. Whatever it takes, Lord, only you know them more than me. Only you love them more than me. Amen. Bring them to your feet, Lord. And he did. And when, before she went to heaven, she was able to see all her children saved, all her children baptized, all her children serving the Lord. Amen? Amen. And so, you know, she was careful not to, not to idolize her husband, her home, 
her children nothing. And the Lord calls us to not indulge in sexual sin. It's very easy to fall. Because you're not having sexual relationships with someone doesn't mean you're not in sexual sin. Amen. Uh, even if you look at somebody the right. wrong way, mm -hmm. you take a second look to check their body out, yes. right. you already committed sin, I'm sorry. Amen. You're not looking at the person, you're looking at the flesh. Amen. Amen? Amen. So that's even sexual sin. Don't commit adultery. Because that sin follows by, now you're wanting to talk to that person. Now you're wanting to be close to that person. Now you want to touch that person. Now you want to be intimate with that person. And now you're in a big mess. Amen. Because all your emotions and all your confusion and all your flesh is going to rise up. Amen. And it's going to rule in your life. Your soul is going to be submitted to the flesh. And the spirit man is not going to be anywhere near. Amen. Amen. Anywhere near that. Amen. Amen. Do not be male prostitutes or female prostitutes or practice homosexuality Amen. or be thieves or greedy people or drunkards. Mm -hmm. See, the, 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 the uh, Christians, you know, there's some Christians that I know that, that, that drink a drink, you, you know, or two when they go to lunch or dinner or whatever. And they say, you know, the, the Bible doesn't say not to drink a drink. And they're right. The Bible doesn't say not to drink a drink. But it does say to not be drunkards. Amen. And I'm going to give you an example of why sh you shouldn't drink a drink. Sometimes we're under stress. Sometimes we want to relax. And pills go in this situation and scenario as well. And we, we say, I'm drinking it to relax. Even coffee can be an addiction. Amen. Amen. Sugar can be an addiction. Yeah. Amen. I'm going to give you an example. My mom told my uh, grandmother's husband, that's, you know, not my mom's dad, you know, you, you shouldn't be drinking. Oh, I control my drinking. I just do the weekends and or one, you know, when I come home from work, I just drink a beer to relax with dinner and that's it. I don't harm anybody. I don't, I'm not doing any harm to anybody or myself. And she said, talk to me in 10 years and see if you didn't become a drunkard. She said the same thing to one of my uncles on my dad's side. She said so the same thing to one of her brothers, my, another one of my uncles. And she was right. Because the devil uses that. Alcohol is not meant to go into our bodies. It's not, it's not meant for our bodies. And when you do that to relax yourself, then you start resorting to that because it makes you feel better, it makes you relax, it makes you feel good, it makes you... Beer tastes nasty. I don't even know why people drink it. <laughs> and they all became drunkards because they can't just take one. Right, yeah. Then they increase it to every other night, then every night, then, you know, a few over the weekend because you're not working. And then you increase it little by little. It's like smoking, like pills, like everything that is addictive. Even pain pills. When the doctors prescribe you pain, pain pills, it's not for your best interest. They don't care. They work for the pharmaceutical company, and I'm not even going to get into that because I'm not political <laughs> on social media. Amen. But you don't ever stay that way because the enemy, that's how he creeps in. So don't fall into it, people. Or don't be thieves. My prayer pastor said, if you're taking a clip, a, a, a paper clip from work, you're stealing. Amen. If you're taking a notepad from work, you're stealing. If you're taking a company pen from work, you're stealing. Amen. You're not asking for it, are you? If you ask for it and they give it to you, fine. So you're the same as if you're committing, uh, you know, grand theft robbery. You steal a car, you steal uh, money from the bank. It's the same thing because we need to be good witness. We Amen. fall back onto who are you witnessing to, onto who's... Uh, judging you as a Christian, right. as a follower of, a, of Christ. Amen. So, don't cheat people. None of these will inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. 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 God created us to be 
the way he created us to be. He didn't create us one way so that we can become another. He didn't make a mistake. The way he created you, that's the way you're supposed to be. You can't change your mind halfway and try to become something else. Amen? Amen. So, don't give yourselves for prostitution because that brings a whole other message about soul ties. Mm. Amen? Amen? And the girls that I go after are, I don't call them prostitutes because they are victims of human trafficking and sexual exploitation. Amen. And Amen. some of these were there captured since they were little girls. So I don't call them prostitutes. Amen. Some of them might be or have started that way, but it's usually not by choice right. because most of them have pimps that are controlling them Amen. or manipulating them. Amen? Amen. Amen. Some of you were like that, but you were cleansed. Hallelujah for God's yes, mercy and Lord. grace Jesus, and, 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 and patience because I was I was a lot of these sins. I was a lot of these. A lot of these. And the Lord had mercy on my life. And he washed me clean. And I didn't believe that I was fully clean to serve these women that I go after. He had to take me to Florida for a month so he can use an elderly couple and say, you are without stain and wrinkle. Go after these girls that are being human trafficked. Go back. They didn't know I used to work for them and left because I didn't feel worthy. But the Lord takes care of you. And when yeah. you go after the Lord and you go after what he purposed you for, he will take care of your house and your loved ones. Amen. You don't have the assignment to save your children. You just have the assignment to, to, to teach them with your life, the way you live your life, and by praying for them so that the Lord can reach them. Amen. Because there's going to be other people that are going to come and speak into their lives. I prayed for that for my ex-husband. I prayed that, that somebody would come into work and talk to him about the Lord. And they did when we were already separated and on our way to divorcing. But I know now that that wasn't, wasn't the man for me. Amen. But he saved him, praise God. He saved him because Amen. of my obedience. If I would have said, okay, I'll follow you to your cult religion. We would both be lost. And I Amen. want to believe that he said, who is this God that is so powerful that she is serving now that she would give me up? Who is he? Amen. I want to believe he wanted to learn about him so much that he became saved. Amen. And now he's serving the Lord and Amen. preaching the word of God. Amen. 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 Thank, you, Thank you, Jesus. So, Next section is avoiding sexual sin. It concentrates more on that, and that's verse 12. And I'm going to excuse myself. Getting dry. Amen. And it says, you say, Hallelujah. I am allowed to do anything, but not everything is good for you amen and even though i am allowed to do anything i must not become a slave to anything amen. yes the lord gave us free will it does say it in the bible because he doesn't want robots That's right. he doesn't want blind sheep he wants you to willingly and lovingly and patiently follow him and surrender all to him so that you can experience him in a full, powerful way. If he didn't give us free will, we wouldn't be able to do that. Amen. We would just be robots. Amen? Amen. I must not become a slave to anything. Not to your job, not to your title, not to your money, not to your home, not to your relationships not to your boss not to you even to your church don't be a don't 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 be a follower of the pastor amen that's right amen when our pastor was leaving the church because he wanted to retire because it was his time he wanted to retire way before that but he couldn't because he 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 couldn't find anybody to do it the, the one that was supposed to do it said no so he had to stay longer people said when he leaves i'm gonna leave because I've been here since he's been here. No. Come on. 
Change is good, people. Growth is good, people. Amen. The Lord calls us to step out of our comfort zone. Yes, amen. So when the Lord is retiring a pastor and rising up another pastor, you support them. You encourage them. If they're not as, as, as spiritually uh, in, in the level as the previous pastor, pray for them, fast amen. for them, encourage them, give them a word of encouragement when you see them in the hallway. Instead of criticizing the way he's doing things because now there are new things and you're not used to it and you're so used to sitting in your pew and, and receiving the preaching a certain way and now Amen. you feel uncomfortable because the preaching is not strong enough or soft enough or loud enough or, or quiet enough. No, let's not complain. If the Lord set them there in that position, it's for a reason. And if it's not to reach you, well, guess what? Then the Lord is telling you to rise up and go to the higher level so that you can touch the younger generation that is Amen. rising up. They need to be strong leaders Amen. so that they can see it in you and Amen. they be encouraged. But if they hear you complaining and they hear you criticizing and they hear you down talking the pastor at home, then that's what they're going to do. Mm, come on. When they become uh, adults and have their own children, that's what they're going to teach their children. Do you want that kind of generation to follow you? Amen. No, amen. no, I don't even know why I went into that. Amen, 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 amen. The Lord calls us to support one another. Amen. And yes, it's been hard for me because I was raised that you say it straightforward like it is. You preach the word and you teach it and you don't sugarcoat it or anything like that. But we are called to support one another. Amen. And if one of us needs support and is not there yet, then we all come huddle around them and make them stronger and hold them up until they can walk in a mighty way like the way that you see them in the future. I have to have patience with those who are not there yet because I was once one of those that was not there yet. Amen. And I, I surrounded myself uh, purposely by mighty women of God that went alongside me and prayed for me when I was going through my troubles with my ex-husband. And because of them and my mom's prayers and my mom's wise counsel, even though sometimes I didn't want to receive it, is that the, it's because I am here today. And I can stand here and preach the word of God because I was taught the right way. You fight for your fellow brothers and sisters and you help them get up. They fell. They committed sin. Don't judge them because they commit sin in a different way than you do. Maybe you're a gossiper and they're, they have sexual immorality. Right. Maybe you're a thief and, 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 and they're going around they're living a double life. When they're down and they're, and they're on the floor, get down on the floor with them and peel them off the floor and tell them what God created them to be. Amen? Amen. Amen. I don't even know where I am. Now. Oh, it's weird. Um. <laughs> you say... Food was made for the stomach and the stomach for food. This is true, though someday God will do away with both of that. He will do away with food. He will do away with your stomach. So don't get concentrated too much. I always say everywhere I go, I'm always hungry and I love food. Just give me anything. I'll eat it because I'm always hungry and I love food. There are almost nothing in this world that I won't eat except for raw oysters. <laughs> They're good smoked. <laughs> but even that is a sin. Gluttony is a sin. Putting stuff in your body that know, you know that is wrong for you is a sin. Because you know what you're going through. You know your body. You know what's wrong for you. And yes, we are called to enjoy. There's passages in the Bible where it says we enjoy feasting. Yes, we enjoy what we like, but we know we know where we, we get out of hand. Amen. So Amen. don't say Amen. that everything that was made for the stomach, you can just take to the stomach. Amen? Amen. 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 But you can't say that our bodies were, were made for sexual immorality either. Amen? Amen? You can't say that the Lord made body for sex. There's a right way for everything. And, and order for everything because God is a God of order. Amen? Amen. So therefore, follow the order of God. Yes. Don't think you can have sex and not have consequences. 
have yeah. sex and I have soul ties. I cannot wait. I know that Pastor Henry is going to preach on soul ties. And I know it's not only sexual soul ties, mm -hmm. but that's part of it. Soul yes. ties, study on it. I always encourage people because it's dangerous. You it's drag true. it yes. for a long time without realizing that you have them. And that hinders your walk with the Lord and your assignments and your purpose and your destiny and all the, the, the ministries that he has for you. It will hinder them until you get rid of them, confess them, ask for forgiveness for them, and ask the Lord to release you from those. Amen? Amen. Amen. They, your bodies, they were made for, for the Lord. And the Lord cares about our bodies. And God will raise us from the dead by his power, just as he raised our Lord from the dead. He wants to raise us from everything we've ever done. Sometimes we even feel guilty for things we went through when we were children. Did we go through a period where somebody was molesting us? Did we go through a period where somebody was bullying us or judging us or ridiculing us? I remember I was in school and all my life I thought it was a dream. But I remember the teacher took me into the supply closet to get more markers and he fondled me. And I thought it was a dream. My whole life I thought I, in my mind, was idolizing him, wanting him to do that to me. See how the enemy works? Mm -hmm. The enemy lies to you and tells you it was your fault. It was your doing. It was your thinking. You're dirty. You're the one that caused it. So therefore, keep it to yourself because you will be judged. And then you're going to be scorned because it was you that caused it. Mm. And, I, and I thought, mm. wow, I had impure thoughts since I was a little girl. And I didn't. I didn't. The Lord revealed that that teacher did that to me. And the enemy caused me to quiet my mouth so that it wouldn't come to light and may trick me into believing that it was my thoughts, that it was a dream, that I dreamt that. Mm. So I wouldn't tell anybody. That's how deep the enemy works in your children's That's lives. Right. Right. So pray for everything because, yes, the Lord will deliver us from anything. But how many years did it take for the Lord to deliver me from that one? The, the Lord wants you to be healed. The Lord wants you to be free. The Lord yeah. wants you to be walking in his purpose. But just as the Lord wants that for you, the enemy wants the opposite. Yeah. And he will use anything. And if someone molested you, he will make you believe that it was your fault so you don't say anything. Mm. If somebody's bullying you, he will make you believe that it's because you are not worthy, you are not. You are not uh, called to do anything good, so therefore that's why you're the one that needs to be the punching bag. Mm. I remember I was in line one day, and um, I, I, I've, I've always been real hairy. My legs, my arms, and, and my mom didn't let me shave. And, and, um, and, and they were calling me a boy. They were saying that I was a boy and that I was in girls' clothing, and they would bully me. And I started gathering. I know my mom used to pray for us when we used to go to school because I don't even know where I got the strength from because they used to say that all the time about me. And I would stay quiet because I was hairy. I couldn't say I wasn't. So, you know, I took it. But then I started getting strength and I didn't know where I was coming from. And now I understand it's because of my mom's prayers that I started talking to them and I started saying, I am a girl and God makes people different ways. And just because I'm different than you doesn't mean that I'm a boy or that you can make fun of me. You have freckles and your hair is orange and I'm not telling you anything. And I'm, like, I'm like, you know, sometimes I had to just talk back. I didn't know how to defend myself, but I started being more confident as I started speaking up for myself. And I know that, I, you know, that that was God working in my life because my mom was praying for me before we would go to school. And I know she would pray for us all the time. But sometimes the enemy uses that so you won't be prosperous. Because guess what? Now you're paying attention 
to what they're saying to you in school and you're not paying attention to your homework, to your studies, to the assignment that the teacher is giving you, you won't become successful, you won't be prosperous, you will always feel defeated, you will always feel less than. Even if you go into the workforce, you will always feel like you're gonna be the punching bag because that's your destiny destination. The girls on the streets that I go and pray over, sometimes they tell me that their pimps tell them that this is what they were created for, that this is their destiny, that this is their purpose, that they are there in this world, put in this world, so that they can please the, the desires of men and that for them to make money off of it, which they don't even keep, by the way, and they think they're making all these thousands of dollars, but they're not because they're giving it up to the pimp. And they are made believe, manipulated, and, and everything to make believe that that's what they were created for. Mm. But God created them for something different. Yeah. But God, but God, if you ever see a girl walking, I encourage you to not criticize her or say she could be doing something different because she can't, yeah. because she's, she's, she's controlled. And she's not in her right mind. And, and, maybe, and maybe that one is, has been captured since she was four years old. And she thinks that's a regular lifestyle. She doesn't know about a regular lifestyle. Amen. So I encourage you to pray for those that are on the street. Amen. 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 Don't you realize that your bodies are actually parts of Christ? Should a man take his body, which is part of Christ, and join, join it to a prostitute? Again, sometimes, sometimes, never, never. The Lord didn't create a man to come and join his body with a prostitute. He created man for a wife and, and, and woman for a, for a husband. And, and therefore, you cannot mess around with anybody else before that. You can't say, let's try it out. You can't say, let's see if this works. Or you can't say, well, in the meantime, while I find my wife, I'm going to go find myself a prostitute because they're already there and that's what they want to do and that's what they work for so I can so I can gratify my 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 pleasures my desires because that brings soul ties it brings impurity it brings everything dirty to your body and therefore to your future wife if you're not delivered from it because believe me even if you Start following the Lord. Yes, you get delivered and forgiven about everything you did, but now you have to do that work. And you have to ask for forgiveness for yes. what you did. Amen. And you have to ask the Lord to release you from that before you even touch your wife because then you're going to pass it on into your generations. And I know people say generational curses exist, and they do. But when we come to the Lord, we need to come to the Lord and say, deliver me from any." everything lord god even anything that i might not be thinking about stuff yes. that i might have forgotten yes, that i already lord, yes, did lord. that yeah. i know you forgave me of please lord that it may not it may not follow me i know and and I have experienced and i'm a true believer that once you give your love life to christ that is broken amen that is broken all your generational curses are not more powerful than your covenant with Christ. Amen. So you break them. That's why my mom was able to see all her six children saved and serving the Lord and baptized and even baptized in the Holy Spirit and doing ministry because she knew and proclaimed and made sure we knew the truth and made sure that we knew that the Lord was the only one that could deliver us, not her but the Lord. And we always receive the truth. It didn't Amen. matter how much it hurt, and it didn't matter how how much it took, or how many years it took for us to come to Him. Amen? Amen. So, don't you realize that if a man joins himself to a prostitute, he becomes one body with her. Is that what we want our children to be? One body with a prostitute? No. For the scriptures say, the two are united into one. That is how the enemy comes and takes over your body. 
because he will take the form of a woman and seduce you so that you can fall and dirty the Lord's temple so that nothing good can inhabit in it. Because do you think that the Holy Spirit is going to dwell in your body if you're joining mm -hmm. your body with a prostitute? Nope. So we need to be careful of even our thoughts. And we need to make sure that we teach our children that that is not right. Once I walked in uh, to one of my boys in the computer or on the TV, um, and he was watching porn. And I knocked on his door because I, I, I saw him through the outside uh, window at night. It was in the middle of the night. I guess he thought I was asleep. And <laughs> I knocked on his door and he's like scrambling. I could hear like all kinds of stuff moving. And then he like, um, open the door right now. Stop hiding your evidence. <laughs> and so he comes to the door and he's like, what? What? And then I said, give me, give me it. He's like, what? Because, I mean, we didn't have cable, so I know it's like a, 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 a one of those VHS or whatever. And he's like, I said, I, I saw what you were watching. Give it to me. And then he's like, it's not mine. It's not mine. If I give it to you, I'm going to get in trouble. And I said, I don't care. Mm. Give it to me. And then he like reaches out inside of the closet and hands it over to me. And he says, it's one of my friends from school. We've been passing it around. And I'm going to get made fun of if I give it to you. I need to return it tomorrow to school. I said, yeah, you were going to return it tomorrow to school. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. I said, who are they? Oh, oh. well, I can't, I can't tell you that. And then I said, okay, okay. Don't tell me, but I'm going to go to school tomorrow, and I'm going to write you out to everybody and all your friends, and I'm going to tell them what I caught you doing, and they're all going to find out anyway. And I'm going to talk to their moms and tell them what you were doing with, the, with somebody else's property. He said, here. And I said, I said, I need to have a talk with you, but we'll talk tomorrow. And I grabbed the stuff, put it in a box, destroyed it the next day, didn't rat him out. And I said, I said, mijo, those things that you were watching are impure. You have not been with a woman yet. And you're watching this. And this is what the enemy is training you to do. You know the Lord. And you know I'm not following God because I'm in sin too. I said, but we know about God. And your grandma didn't raise you that way. They call you the preacher at church because he used to go to my mom. He used to go clean the church with my mom every Monday morning, I think it was. And 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 he uh he would pray with her because she would pray. She would pray in the church when she, after she would finish cleaning. And I said, and you are being trained by the enemy on how to think of a woman and use a woman. I said, no normal woman is gonna do those things to you. Amen. You should not expect those things from any woman. They are not normal. And no woman should desire to be touched that way by any man. That is impure. The Lord didn't, didn't, didn't create us for that. All those things the enemy uses. Our, our, our flesh, our desires, our everything. Our inexperience because he didn't know. And I said, so I want you to know. From now on, that is etched in your head, that those are not normal actions. Amen. That that is not love. That that is not how a woman is to be looked at. A woman is to be respected. You have, uh, you have a sister, you have a mom, you have a grandma, you have aunties, you have cousins. You want people to look at, guys, men, to look at them that way? So if we don't speak into our children's lives, the enemy will make sure that he raises your children. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yes, he will. That's right. And that was when we didn't have accessible internet or, or cell phones yep. for them. 
but the enemy knows how to get into the schools and how to get into your children's right. lives right. and how to get in. First, it started with magazines, and then magazines about 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 nude girls, uh, magazines about other religions, you know, doctrinations and and all that kind of stuff, and 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 porn and all that. So that he trains them since they're little boys, so that they can become corrupt men. Mm-hmm. I told his dad, and he said, "Oh, well, well, well you know, that's normal. Uh, uh, kid, kid, all the kids, you, you know, they run into that, but they grow out of it. <laughs> Ignorance, mm-hmm. Ignorance, mm-hmm. acceptance. That's right. Amen. Passiveness. Amen." You give in to everything that the enemy lies to you about. That's right. Amen. Is that really? Sit down and think about it. Do you really want your children to be raised in, in a porn mentality? Do you think they're going to make any woman happy? Because they are going to feel miserable. Because our bodies weren't created to be that. So they are not going to be happy. They are not going to fulfill their purpose. They will have crushed hearts. They will have crushed spirits. They will have work mentalities. And they will live a life of failure. So you need to pray for your children to be delivered of sexual immorality. And all the lies of the enemy since they were three, four, five years old. Yes. If somebody ever touched them or spoke into their lives or showed them an impure image, you need to pray all that out of them amen. and away from them amen. and pray protection over them. Yes, amen. Because amen. that's how, how the, the bad spirits want to overtake them. Then they will visit their, ve- their beds and try to pull them away from you. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Run from sexual sin. Yes. You know, I tell my friends every chance I get. The Lord calls us to fight, to use all the weapons of his warfare. Yes. All the tools that he gave us, all the wisdom and knowledge that's in his book, everything that we can use so that we can fight every situation for our health, for our prosperity, for our families, for our salvation, for continuous growth. But the only one time in the Bible that the Lord tells us to run, to flee, is from sexual immorality, sexual sin. Because he knows that we don't stand a chance. He knows that our flesh will give in. He knows that if we put ourselves in those situations, we are going to fail him. And we are going to feel miserable. And we're going to regress in our walk with the Lord. And who knows how long we'll be in our shame. And in our, and, and we won't be able to talk to uh, fellow believers so that they can help us get out of that slump. It could take years, decades, mm-hmm. fall back from church and never come back. Because we didn't run from that sexual mm-hmm. sin. Don't put yourselves in situations where you're going to be touched the wrong way or even taken advantage of alone with a male in the dark at night in your car without no chaperones. And I'm preaching to myself, okay? I'm preaching to myself because I'm a single woman. And the Lord started speaking to me about a husband which... That's a whole other story. Pray for me. Because <laughs> I don't want him. <laughs> I mean, I say, why mess up a good thing? Or like for 12 years, it's been me and you, and we've won every battle. We win every time. Why would you want me to deal with another human being that is faulty like me? I can't even change myself. But God knows what's best for me. And I want to be in his will. And I accept it because he told me to be open to it. So I need to be good witness, and I didn't need to be wise, and I need to be, and, and I, told, I told one of my friends, I said, I need to start honoring and respecting that future husband of mine. Amen. So therefore, I need to act like it, walk like it, and I need to take that advice. Run from sexual sin. Yes. 
Amen. Don't put yourselves in situations where you're going to fall. Yes, Amen. that's right. Amen. Because my Amen. flesh is, is flesh. Amen. And I'm not going to win that one. Mm -hmm. We don't. We win. We win. With God, we win. Amen. We win every time. Amen. But we win by running from sexual sin. Amen. We win by running. Not by confronting it. Not say, oh, I've grown enough. I've been single for 12 years. I'm wise enough. I won't fall. No. Run from sexual sin. First Corinthians six eighteen. Run from sexual sin. Amen. Don't put your if you're a boss, don't bring that girl into your office, your secretary. Mm. Amen. Praise without God. somebody else right there Amen. while you're talking to her. If you don't have those thoughts and you don't mean bad, she will accuse you. That's right. Whenever she doesn't get her way. So don't do that. No other sin so clearly affects the body as this one does. For sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. Amen. Just like putting, abusing uh, uh, alcohol and drugs and pills and, and sleeping whatever pills and, and cutting yourself and, and doing bad things to your body, do you realize, don't, don't you realize that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? who lives in you and was given to you by God. So your body is a gift from God. Amen. Any other gifts, do you treasure them? Do you hold them with great admiration that the Lord would think of you worthy enough to give you that gift? Well, your body is that way. Your body is that way. Do not taint it or cause wrinkles to it by impurities of the world. You do not belong to yourself. See, God gave you that body. Amen. So it belongs to God. Amen. You belong to Christ. Amen. So therefore, why would we want to tarnish that? Amen. On the contrary, we should strive every day to become better so that we can be used in a mightier and greater way so that we can impact those who are still not there yet. Those who are hopeless, those who are not in in that growth uh, uh, spirit like you are. For God bought you with a high price. What more reason do I need to give you? What more reason do I need to give you than tell you that your body was bought with a high price? Amen. Amen. The Holy Spirit dwells in you. Why would you want to, 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 to grieve the Holy Spirit? So you must honor God with your body. Amen? Amen. Amen. And that is what God had for you today. And Amen. it, it felt like an exhortation. That's because <laughs> that's how the Lord uses me. Thank you, everyone. Amen. Lord, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord uses her that way because she's an evangelist. That's right. <laughs> that awesome message. Yes. Uh, we, Lord, thank you because, uh, yeah, many of those, we were many of those. Yeah. And give thanks to the Lord because we're not doing that anymore. Amen. Now we serve the Lord. Amen. We serve the Almighty, Great Amen. I Am. And Amen. So, thank you, Jesus. I just thank the Lord for that message. Uh, I hope many were blessed by that message, and I hope that many, uh, that the Holy Spirit will give them clarity uh, on what that message is, because, you know, the enemy is going to try to distort that message. Yep. So we'll be praying uh, that that it falls on fertile soil, and, 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 and for those that, that, that are listening to it or will listen to it, that they'll get that clear message that the that the Lord wanted them to receive uh, concerning chapter 6. Um, so with that, I'm going to ask uh, Pastor Henry Potter to come up here and close it out and pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. So I have been nominated to pray us out today. <laughs> Praise God by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Amen. So I'm going to be obedient. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. So um, get prepare your hearts to be prayed out. Amen. And then after I pray us out, then I'll I'll come back and do my other role. Amen. Praise <laughs> God. 
Father God, we just come before you right now just thanking you, Father God, for this word that was given to us, Father God, this teaching of your word, Father God, that we pray that it did not fall on deaf ears, Father God, that each and every man and woman that heard this message, that it, Father God, it goes into the heart, goes into the soul of man, Father God, and bring about change and transformation, Father God. We pray that, Father God, that our walks before you be honorable, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And we pray that, Father God, that our thoughts be pure and our heart be pure, Father God, before you, Heavenly Father. And we're just asking that on this day, Father God, that everyone that has heard this message be uplifted, Father God, and that they be leveled up in you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. That they not be the same, Father God, but that their lives will be for me be transformed yes, in the name Lord. of Hallelujah. Jesus. So, Father God, we ask on today that, Father God, as we close out this service, that you move through our lives, Father God, that our lives, Lord Jesus, may be a newness in it, Father God, and a new way of thinking. And we ask for protection over each and every individual today that are here and those that are across the Facebook Live, Father God, that you protect us from all harm and danger, Father God. And that, Father God, that all the fiery darts of the enemy may not be able to penetrate our lives, Father God. And we just give you honor today. We ask that you bless the speaker. That, Father, that you continue to increase the speaker, Father God. Use the speaker mightily as the speaker, Father God, moves forward in you, Lord. And we just give you all honor today. Glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Just want to thank everybody for coming out today. It has been a blessing. I'm telling you, I mean, this message was a powerful. It was like it been a short chapter, but it had a lot of nuggets in that short yeah. chapter. Yes. You know, one thing, you get that one quick punch. That's what this chapter was. Like. <laughs> Boom, right there to the gut. And you got to take it and just keep on pushing. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Amen. And so I just want to thank each and every one of you that were tuned in. As I noticed, there was quite a bit of people tuning in. And I'm hoping that you receive what you that you tuned in to receive. And I'm asking that you come right back here on next week yeah. because we have a powerful pe uh, preacher coming through here next week, one of our guest speakers. So we definitely want you to come on back through here. His name is going to be Evangelist Art Martinez. Yeah. He is the evangelist pastor over Chapel of Change out of Carson. He's going to be coming through our house. He's been here before, and he tore the house up. Yeah. So you don't want to miss that one. He's going to come in here, and now he's going to tear the garage up. Yeah. Amen, Woo! praise God. So I'm looking forward to that anointing coming through this house. Yeah. But Sister Evangelist Maria, just want to say, continue to let God use you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, God is moving through you, and he's, and he's opening up doors for you, yeah. and he's making things happen. I see him yeah. shifting in yes. your atmosphere. Yes. You keep on letting him shift yes. in your atmosphere. Yes. And I'm telling you, God is about ele elevating you to new levels. Yes, amen. You never stay the same in the kingdom. That's right. You elevate. See, God has to fix you up a little bit, move you to another level. So don't keep your mind closed off for elevation. That's right. See, amen. God will move you through the realm and from a teacher to a preacher, from a preacher to a teacher. Come on now. He'll do that for you from an evangelist to a pastor. See, God in his amen. discretion moves you amen. through amen. the or through the world and through the uh, minds of people and also amen. through the different gifts of the spirit. He moves you. That's right. Not man. Amen. Man can't move you to the next level. That's right. God moves you to the Amen. next level. Amen. Thank you, and I want to encourage each of you to keep an open heart and an open mind so when God's ready to move you to the next level, that you move with ease. Amen. Amen. You don't move with hindrance of your mind or your own capabilities. You move with ease. I'm telling you, you got to be comfortable with the move. Yes. Got to be comfortable with the next level. Yes. Amen. Because see, the next level comes with great responsibility. Amen. And so prepare your mind. So I don't want to go ahead and start preaching. We're going to shut this thing down. <laughs> Praise God. I had somebody that was on there that was asking a question. I think it was Uche saying, when is soul ties happening? Well, you keep on looking. It's going to be happening October 30th. Praise God. The Holy Spirit's already gave me that message. So Pastor Henry will be coming forth with soul ties. It may Some people think it's going to be something, but God got something totally different Come from on. it. You may think it's going to be something else, but God's got something totally Praise different from Lord. soul Hallelujah. ties. So prepare your hearts for a month from now. Is it a month? Probably like a month and a half. He already gave me the message and completed it. Ooh, watch out now. Watch out, y'all. I mean, the Holy Spirit coming tight and hard with that one. So prepare your heart for that one in October, praise God. But like I said again, next week, come on now. Next week, Evangelist Art from Chapel of James is going to be here. So come back out. All of you that are here today, show back up next week. Amen. And all of you that are tuned in, on, show up online next week. Because your hearts and your spirits are going to be blessed and overwhelmed with joy. Again, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being blessed. Thank you for um, just even taking out the time to be part of this ministry. And I'm going to share something with you. And I got to share this because I wasn't going to share it. I was going to just shut this thing off, but I got to say it. <laughs> we are going to have our donation system up and running, maybe in about two days, two or three days. 
and we have officially have our website up and running. Praise yes, God. Chosen Few Outreach Ministries website is up and running, so you can go there and see what we're doing, see how this ministry is moving forward, and have opportunities for you to be a blessing to this ministry on there. So it's going to be a lot of opportunities for you to help push this ministry forward as God pushes it forward. See, because remember, God don't need your donations. Because God's going to make a way for this ministry to push amen, forward as amen. he's already doing. Thank you, but if Lord. God Hallelujah. lays it on your heart to be a blessing to the forward motion of this ministry, we will receive it and accept it. Praise God. Amen. But again, have a blessed week, a blessed weekend, and we'll see you right back here on next Sunday at 2 p.m. for Evangelist Hart Martinez to bring a powerful word of God. God amen. bless you. Amen. 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 amen.